Alright, this is a run I've been trying to complete for a while now. Demonic Library with Curious and Scrooge. And uh, it took me quite a lot of attempts and I finally got it working, so it's uh, very satisfying to see it completed. So let's dive in. Upstairs, uh, the effect of Curious basically gives all of the monsters the unstable trait. As a sorcerer with Avatar's Codex, we have several ways of playing around the unstable trait. It also makes those profane flesh monsters appear which drain piety. I decided to kill that one right now while I didn't have a lot of piety to drain. I want to be able to farm piety and if I fireball the level 1 monsters they'll die. If I fireball the curse bearer I'll be cursed which will turn off my shield and maybe defense items I get in the future. So I'm just going to keep fireballing that succubus and accept that that means that when she counterattacks I'm going to take a ton of weakness. And that's okay, I don't rely on physical attacks anyhow, and I really want to build up and start our piety as quickly as possible. It would be nice if I found another glyph like Endeswall that I could use to just get piety whenever I wanted without, you know, attacking a monster that's too strong for me and keeps weakening me, but I guess I'll just have to resign myself to no physical attacks ever, which Considering that's like my dream playstyle anyhow, is not a huge sacrifice. At least not from my subjective perspective, in terms of actual like game efficiency. It's not free. So I'm gonna kill that imp, but it blinked deep into the darkness. That's three level th three curse golems now. Which we should be able to take on pretty easily when we reach level 2. We'll be cursed for a while, but it won't be so bad. That looks like a Lekon sub dungeon. It's, uh. I suppose fireballing down the weakest of those goats is better than fireballing the succubus in terms of it gives us a little piety, but there's not a lot of benefit. There's no other goats upstairs, so we wouldn't get much piety. And I'd much rather spend my exploration up here than down there, since up here I might actually find something good. Fireheart is really nice in long runs, and in particular, it's very good when dealing with all these unstables, because sometimes you just need a bit more health to get around an unstable, so. So I finally took down that succubus there, and there was actually something interesting about it. I had her at 10 HP, but with 10 max HP, the unstable would kill me, regardless of the sorcerer's healing abilities. So I had to punch another monster to pop the burning stack, which brought her down to 8 HP, and then I was able to kill her and survive the unstable explosion. Most of these kills we've had in a row here have uh, said next hit, boom, and red, implying that we're going to die, but sorcerer is always healing us out of danger. For those. We also took on a couple of profane fleshed profane fleshes when we were out of piety because we just bought boons from Miss Terra. I really don't like having my piety drained, but while I don't have any piety to drain, I don't mind them at all. Wait what is an excellent find. And that will become clear one why that's so important will become clear once we go downstairs. But I've tried to do this dungeon without Wait What before on this particular combination of badges, and the problem is that without Wait What, trying to escape the basement once you're done there to get back up here and reach the boss parade, it's uh, not so easy. Now that I spent most of my piety, I can happily take on that level 6 profane flesh. In previous runs, I didn't really take these on so much. This run, I've been a lot more conscious about figuring out exactly when I can afford to go after them, uh, deliberately buying boons in order to get myself down to low piety so that I can go after them without losing piety. It's 
funny that punch killed that cultist in one hit, even though we only have one physical attack power. It's because even though our punch didn't do a whole lot, the cultist counterattack into our mana shield did quite a lot. I think I can take this level 8 imp if I dizzy it. If I don't dizzy it, then surviving the unstable is going to be dicey. Alright, I love getting kills three levels higher than me. This succubus would be a nice target as well. Now that I started the fight, I'm starting to feel like maybe it would have been smarter to dizzy her first with wait what? That's probably what I should have done. So, bit of a mistake there. I didn't comment on this when I found when we found her first, but we found Earth Mother near the start, and Earth Mother is a great goddess to find as a secondary god for these Codex builds because she can turn mana burn people dizzy and also provides big mana spikes. I always prep Mystera because I really, really like having my fireballs only cost five, and you do need weakening for some bosses in some runs, but Earth Mother is like the absolute perfect secondary god to appear, and there isn't really a great tertiary god to appear. Like, these two are the dream. I actually got a bit spoiled by Naga City Curious doing a bunch of runs there, because over in Naga City Curious there's always uh, an Earth Mother available, and then once you go to other dungeons, no, sometimes there's no Earth Mother. You don't realize it, but you develop a bit of, you know, an implicit assumption that whenever you need an Earth Mother, she'll be there for you. I'm gonna make this guy dizzy so that he can't apply poison. That's the first of these bosses down, and not the easiest of them either. The easiest would be in the top right, with physical resist and weakening blow, neither of which apply to us, and the bottom left with retaliate fireball, which we have Avatar's Codex. Nobody doesn't have Retaliate Fireball. Alright, level up got us full heal so we can immediately go after the other win. That was another fight where we survived the unstable by the skin of our teeth with Essence Transmit. I know I bring that up a lot more than it might warrant. It's not really a big deal per se, but it just gives you a little bit of an edge in so many fights that once you know to watch out for that tr trick to let you finish fights a little bit sooner, you find yourself using it constantly. So it adds a neat element to gameplay there. Buy the gloves of Midas because... why not? It doesn't make a difference either way, really. That wait what was not very well thought out. I am now realizing I've locked myself in. I could win on the retaliate there, but I would get mana burned while still 10 health from leveling up. Best thing to do would probably be to just accept that and go kill some popcorn, but evidently I'm being a bit stubborn. Crystal Ball. Now there's another great find. The gold cost doesn't matter to us because this dungeon showers us in gold. This time I'm careful to wait what it into a position where it won't lock me in. Once bitten, twice shy and all that. So finally that fight's done, but we used a ton of darkness to finish it. And we're going to really be feeling that lack of darkness, especially since it looks like there's no Pizor and there's no Endus Wall. So we can see the secret sub-dungeon in the top left, just above that level 7 cultist. Like, we can see from the walls where it is, but we have no way of getting there. So that's another 5x5 five five room that we just won't be able to explore for space this run. There is more darkness down here. I'm at 19 max mana. I would really like the 20th. 
that's kind of the one downside to prepping uh, the Smuggler's Den, is that it puts one of your mana boosters out of easy access, where you have to explore a bunch of tiles that you know will reveal good monsters that you actually want to fight in order to get to it, which means early in the game you just can't. So you often end up near the end here with one mana short of where you ought to be. But the darkness is nice. And if you do explore that in Wastes of Darkness, it's just darkness that you wouldn't have had in the first place if you didn't prep Smuggler's Den, so it's hard to say it's bad by any stretch of the imagination. Alright, that's all five bosses up here dealt with, and now we are going to go downstairs. Once we've regened a little bit. Now, when I did the uh, Curious Vicious Token run, I used Endis Wall to bash my way around the downstairs arena instead of fighting my way through. Since we now don't have the Vicious Token, the question mark, question mark, question mark guards only have half as much health as they did in Vicious Token, so luckily we're not going to be as screwed from not being able to do that, but we are going to have to fight our way through, and it is going to be not the easiest thing, especially since sometimes you just get unlucky with how the numbers end up. Ended up using my crystal ball there, and I think that was worth it. We're painfully low on darkness, so whatever value we can get from it is good. I say we don't need to worry about gold in terms of Crystal Ball, and for the most part that's true as long as you don't over-rely on it too much. That last question mark we killed, by the way, was perfect. In a single Fireball, it survived the Fireball, but then died to our Mana Shield on the Retaliate. We wish every question mark monster down here was the same way. But as I was saying, I am said we can mostly just crystal ball whenever we want and without caring about gold, and that's largely true, but there's a bit of a lie in there as well. With Fireheart, which is like crystal ball, but without the gold cost and for health instead, often we're fine with casting Fireheart when it's only a charge to like 10% or so, if that little bit of extra health or whatever it gives us is what we need. Crystal Ball, we don't have the same luxury. We can't just fire it off at two mana whenever we feel like it. We will run out of money if we do that. So we can use it a lot, but we do have to be a little responsible with it. That was fairly lucky. It only took two wait what's to move the avatar. I cleared off a little path to the side so that I would have somewhere to put the avatar next to the entrance and then also be able to walk back to the entrance after switching places with them. This way, when when we fight the Avatar and it summons more question mark guards, we won't be cut off from the upstairs. That's really helpful during the fight because it means we'll have access to all of the resources up there, like being able to convert glyphs to refill our mana, or ask Earth Mother for help if need be. But it's especially important because we're trying to do Scrooge. The boss has 75% magic resist, so Piercing Wand is the best item we can find to help with that. Uh, without, screw without being able to move the avatar, I frequently killed the avatar, but then had to fight my way all the way back through this room full of monsters. And uh, that just doesn't work so well. I'm not, I don't think I've ever actually made it out in one piece from that sort of situation. I The best I've gotten is making it two question mark guards away from the exit, and then running out of resources and having to just leave with a regular curious win. So very glad I was able to move the avatar like this. Speaking of regular curious win, it's actually kind of funny. As I said, I 
bit, did a lot of attempts at Curious Scrooge to try to make it work. And, uh, what's, um, and, like, I failed over and over again, but what's interesting is that even though I failed to get Curious Scrooge, I s succeeded at winning the regular Curious Run basically every time. There were a couple that I abandoned early for reasons like, oh, the Mystera altar I prepped is locked behind level 4 monsters. That's not very fair. But for the most part, like, I found that even though I couldn't actually escape and uh, make it to the uh, boss parade, I did at least win Curious normally, which is really reassuring. It says to me that Curious is not just winnable, but winnable consistently. Curious Scrooge, I think, is not winnable consistently, at least on my current skill level, but is winnable. And this is why I was so interested in the run. Even though I have Avatar's Codex, the Avatar, when killed, drops a second Avatar's Codex. Now, normally you've already won, so there's nothing left to do with your double Codex. But with Boss Parade, there's post-final boss content. So, we have 12 more bosses on which to inflict our double codex nonsense. And that's what I've been looking forward to this whole time. When I chose this run, I was 100% guided by the beauty of my weapons. And there are no weapons half as beautiful as double codex. They don't stack with each other maybe as well as you would like, since, you know, the second codex can't make the burning stacks instantly max out twice as hard, but the second codex also can't make them retaliate fireball twice as hard, so it's still a reasonable spike in damage. We did use basically all of our potions fighting the avatar. One of the big risks in this run is that you survive the avatar fight, but you have to convert your original avatar's codex in doing so because you run out of uh, health resources, and I'm really glad that didn't happen because having to do the boss parade on only one codex, like, takes the fun out of this particular run. Also, I can't stress enough how important to find Piercing Wand was. By the end of the boss battle, the boss was down to 25% magic resist. It started at 75 so that means that, on average, during the battle, it was at uh, about 50% magic resist, meaning it was taking twice as much damage, on average, from our fireballs as it would have if we didn't have any Piercing Wand at all. So, in other words, Piercing Wand doubled all our damage to the Avatar. It halved the number of fireballs we needed. And that's huge, because we spent a lot of fireballs even with the having, So that probably saved us... I don't even remember how many fireballs I used. I guess if we got it from 75 down to 25 at about 3 resist stripped each, that's more than 15 fireballs. So Piercing One saved us 15 fireballs all in that one fight. Which is amazing. Look at this, Medusa dies in two fireballs. Medusa with her vicious dungeon stats because the boss parade uses the whatever big percent the upstairs of a uh, demonic library is, I think 140% difficulty. Medusa still dies in just two fireballs. That's insane. I'm sorry, I just... If you know anything about me, you know I love me my avatar's codex. So double, go, double codex is just... It's really hard not to grin like an idiot playing this run, and then keep grinning like an idiot, idiot watching the run again later.
saving the Iron Man for later so we have time to apply more weakenings from Mystera. looking for someone I can kill to get me closer to a level up. I want to do a mid-fight level up to deal with a difficult boss downstairs. Most likely Iron Man. Iron Man takes the most fireballs of those who were made, so Iron Man is the one where the level up mid-fight is going to be most appreciated. really set the level up up properly though i'm still 9 xp away from leveling luckily this profane flesh survives the first hit just barely so when i attack this imp it will die to the burning stack and that levels me up if it had died to the fireball directly we would have taken like 100 damage from unstable which is why i couldn't take on that like level 7 imp that was standing next to it that would have killed me Bleedy, you have like 30% magic resist. Stop resisting my weight wets. You're not supposed to roll that well on your defenses. We had more resources left than it looked like because even though we used all of our potions on hand during the Avatar fight, we hadn't converted any of our glyphs upstairs yet. And all of our glyphs are... Well, A, our glyphs are mana potions in and of themselves, thanks to refreshment, and B, they give us more mana potions due to Gnome Sorcerer, or Gnome specifically. So we did have a bit more resources left than it seemed. I am four piety away from leveling up, and I can't desecrate any gods to get this level up. So I'm looking for somewhere I can harmlessly, safely cast a fireball to get my level up. And it turns out this one random question mark god here, guard here, will retaliate weakly enough that I can do it. There are also some piety sparkles down by the Pact Maker that I would need to pick up, that I could pick up, but even then I could only get three that way and I need four, so I would have needed to attack that question mark guard at least once. Now Earth Mother's going to make the last two dizzy for us over and over again. I don't need to worry about health resources because they're never going to land a hit on me. And <laughs> the last two die simultaneously due to the burning stack. That was a lot of bosses who could not stand up to the glory that is Double Avatar's Codex. So, been trying that uh, for a long time. I finally got the Wait What to, uh, to let me bring the Avatar over. There was one run where I got Wait What, but the Avatar resisted like nine times, so I didn't have any resources, and then I had to convert the Codex fighting him, and then I only had one Codex, and I didn't have enough resources left to get through the boss parade, but double Codex made all of the attempts worth it. That's just too fun. Just much too fun.